During the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol, a person participating in the attack, a woman named Ashley Babbitt, was shot by a Capitol police officer. She and several others were in the process of smashing in the glass window of a door inside the House of Representatives, trying to force their way into where members of Congress were sheltering from the mob. Since that day, U.S. Capitol Police have withheld the name of the officer who fired the shot over fears that far-right sympathizers of the Capitol rioters might try to single him out for retribution. And those fears were not hypothetical. Um, after the attacks, specifically white supremacists first, uh, and then other far-right groups, not only did demand the name of the officer who fired the shot, they, they did that alongside increasingly ghoulish efforts to try to turn Ashley Babbitt into a martyr. Uh, images pretty soon started turning up on far-right social media outlets um, of something they called the Babbitt flag, showing an outline of a woman that's supposed to be her in front of the Capitol. And you see underneath her chin, there's that drop of blood. Um, there's several versions of that flag, some with taglines like the word vengeance written on them, meaning vengeance for her. Uh, note also in this one, the Star of David on the Capitol there, presumably to suggest that the government is controlled by a Jewish conspiracy. And so we need, you know, vengeance on the Jews or whatever. That far right and indeed white supremacist attempt to turn Ashley Babbitt into a white nationalist martyr who must be avenged, who must be the, you know, cause behind which we organize the race war. That started from the very bleeding edges of far-right and white supremacist online discourse. And then it creeped into the conservative mainstream, amplified by conservative pundits and conservative members of Congress, and then eventually by the man at the center of it all, um, former President Trump, who started at his post-presidential rallies demanding to know the name of the police officer who fired that shot, shouting, who shot Ashley Babbitt, as a regular feature of his rallies now. Joining us now is Ryan Riley. He's the senior justice reporter for The Huffington Post. He's been following the January 6th rioters and their ties to far-right movements uh, from the very, very beginning. Ryan, thanks for making time tonight. I appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me. Tell, tell us a little bit about the role that um, Lieutenant Byrd, who's now identified himself publicly, um, and the shooting of Ashley Babbitt have played in, in far-right circles online since the January 6th attack. It's been a real motivating force. You know, this is someone who everyone is sort of rallying against on the uh, rallying for on the far right. And obviously, the factor that cannot be removed from this at all is the race of the officer who shot um, Ashley, uh, Ashley Babbitt. Uh, that just plays a tremendous factor here. Um, I would say, you know, it is amazing how quickly this alliance between the police and the Republican Party broke down both on January 6th and on and more broadly with with Trump. You know, the idea that Donald Trump, who made himself out to be this law enforcement candidate and the guy for law and order, the guy who has the cops back, is now attacking a police officer and demanding his name when it was a violent rioter who broke into the U.S. Capitol and went into, in fact, like one of the most sac sacrosanct and sacred chambers of the uh, of Congress through a broken window. It really is just amazing to see those attacks. And, you know, I think a, a important thought experiment to do here is just think for a moment how the how the right and Republicans and Trump would have reacted had a officer sit in some random city last summer who was perhaps, you know, off duty and guarding, say, a local liquor store, had that officer shot someone who broke into a window of just some random liquor store. What we're talking about here, that was the most important spot in America on January 6th. That was about democracy. That was about the transfer of power. And it really is just astonishing how quickly people have abandoned the support for law enforcement in this scenario simply because of her political ties and because of so much of the political movement supports really what she was all about, which was trying to stop. She had this delusional belief that the election had been stolen. And that is really widespread on the Republican Party. So that's something that they see as justified in many aspects. Well, given the way that that narrative has taken shape around her around her and around her killing on January 6th and the way that President Trump, first among all of them, has been demanding the identity of this officer um, in, a, in a very threatening way. When he talked tonight about the threats that he's had, what do you make of his decision to identify himself, to go on camera and say, it was me, this is my name, this is where I work, this is what happened? 
Yeah, I mean, it's a bold move. And I think that he sort of laid out why he was deciding to do that, uh, because, you know, he he stood up on on January 6th and he and he's standing up then and he wants to, you know, he's I think that he he believes he saved lives. And I think that if you just simply look at the video, that was that final line of defense. If the rioters had broken through that line of defense, they would have had direct access to members of Congress. So I just think that, you know, he really wants to sort of stand up. And I think that the threats more broadly are something that is, is getting more attention as we go on. You know, I can report that there are uh, some prosecutors uh, who are working on January 6 cases who have received threats. And that's something that the FBI is, is looking into and urging uh, anyone to communicate when they receive those sort of things. But because there is this huge political movement um, bubbling up on the right, in fact, someone who is formerly on Trump's campaign is organizing this this movement and this rally next month to sort of gather and rally people in support of people who have been locked up uh, ahead of trial until until trial. Now, these are the people who are locked up pre-trial at this moment are some dangerous folks. And I think that that's overall they are have are caught on video committing violence against law enforcement and believe in these delusional conspiracy theories about a stolen election and in many cases have expressed uh, their desire to continue fighting this battle. So for someone from in so close in Trump's orbit who you know literally pushed around a, a golden idol of Trump at CPAC to come in and now declare that we want to get these people who attacked cops out of jail is just such a mind blowing scenario when you look back at what the Trump campaign was all about, which was supposed to be about law and order. The idea that they are backing criminals who are caught on video attacking police officers is really just astonishing. That was a major attack during the campaign was that, you know, that say the uh, the now vice president was supporting bail funds for people who are charged with more minor crimes during some of the unrest last summer. And now we've had a total flip on that. We're just completely you know, everything's sort of thrown off, and it's amazing how quickly the tables turned there. Ryan Riley, senior justice reporter for The Huffington Post. Ryan, thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. It's good to have you here. Thanks much. Underscoring that reporting there, the FBI investigating threats against prosecutors who are working on January 6th cases. That is news.